In this lesson, we will discuss compute products. Google App Engine. A flexible zero ops platform for building highly available apps. Google Container Engine. Logical infrastructure powered by Kubernetes. The open source container orchestration system. Google Compute Engine. Virtual machines running in Google's global data center network. Now we will look at Compute Engine. Google Compute Engine lets you create and run virtual machines on Google infrastructure. Compute Engine offers scale, performance, and value that allows you to easily launch large compute clusters on Google's infrastructure. There are no upfront investments, and you can run thousands of virtual CPUs on a system that has been designed to be fast and to offer strong, consistent performance. Next, we will do a practical session using Google Compute Engine. Here, we will see how to create a virtual machine using Google Compute Engine. For that, we have to go to Compute Engine. And from there, we select VM Instances. Here, we can create virtual machines using Compute Engine. Click on Create Instance here. Here, I will specify the instance name as Linux01. After that, we have to specify the zone. Here, I will specify the zone as Asia East 1A. After that, we have to select the virtual machine type. I will select the virtual machine type as Micro. After that, we have to select the virtual machine OS. And here, I will select the OS name as Sent OS 7. And from here, we have to specify the boot disk type also. If we want to select any application images, we have to select them here. Currently, we don't need any application for now. After that, if we want to select custom images, we can select it from here. Likewise, we can see the snapshots and existing disks here. For this instance, we have selected the Sent OS 7 and boot disk type as standard persistent disk with 10 gigabytes, and we're not stalling any applications here. Now click Select. Here, we can see a few more options. We can see the identity and API access. I will keep them as default. If we want to make this instance for HTTP traffic, we can select it here. And we can see more options here. We will discuss these options later. After that, click on Create.
it will take some time to create the virtual machine. In the bottom, we can see the status. Here, we can see that the Linux instance has been successfully created. Just click on the instance name to see the details. And we can see more information about that instance. Here, we can see more details like machine type, CPU platform, zone, IP address, additional disks, network, subnet, etc. In this way, we can see more details about that instance. If we want to stop the instance, we can stop it by selecting Stop here. If we want to clone the instance, we can select the Clone option here. If we want to delete the instance, we can select Delete. If we want to edit any of the options, click on Edit here. From here, we can set up tags. If we want to create any tag for this instance, we can create it here. I will create the tag name as Linux Instance. If we want to create a new static IP address, we can select it here. If we want to add any additional disks, we can add them here. Currently, I'm not adding any new disks. If we want to change the network or firewall information, we can change it here. In this way, we can add and edit the information for that instance. After that, click on Save. And this is how you edit an instance. If we want to reset this instance, select Reset here. In this way, we can create instances and we can edit the options for that instance. Next, we will see how to connect this instance remotely. In order to connect the instances, we have to go to VM Instances. Here, we can see the option Connect. And here we can see the options Open in Browser Window, Open in Browser Window on Custom Port, View gCloud Command, and Use Another SSH Client. Now, we will see how to connect this instance using different options. The first option is, connect this instance using the browser window. For that, go to the SSH and click on Open in Browser Window. It will open another window from where we can log in to the instance. And we have successfully logged in and we can run the commands from here. In this way, we can log into the instance remotely. This is one method to connect the instance. The next option is to open in browser window on custom port. If we want to connect to the instance with the custom port, we have to select this option. And here we have to provide the port number of the instance. After that, we can log into that instance using that port. The next option is View gCloud Command. To connect to this instance, we have to select this command and run it from the gCloud command line tool. So, 
copy this command and close it. Now we have to run this command in the gcloud shell. For that, we have to go to the right side top option and select Activate Google Cloud Shell. So, from here, we have to click on Start Cloud Shell. So, from here, we paste the command that we copied earlier and press Enter. and then click Y to proceed further. So, in this way, we can log in to this instance. And from here, we can run any command we want. And that is how we can connect to the Linux instance. After completing your work in the instance, we can close the instance from here. In order to access the instance from PuTTY, we have to create public and private keys. For that, we have to go to the session, and we have to run the command ssh hyphen keygen. This will generate the keys for the username AWS test 15. And after that, we have to enter the passphrase. Here, I've entered the passphrase. And now we have to re-enter it. In this way, we can create a public key that will be saved under ssh slash myssh.key.pub, and the key name will be saved as myssh.key. If we want to see the key, just copy it here and go to that directory. Or we can run the command cat and the file name. This is the public key for that username. So by using this key, we can log in to the instance using the PuTTY tool. After that, we have to run the command chmod400. By running this command, this key will be visible to this user only. No other user can see this public key. In this way, we can generate the public key. If we want to see the SSH keys which we have created, we can go to Metadata. And here we have to select SSH keys. And these all are the SSH keys that we have created for this project. By using these SSH keys, we can log in to this instance remotely. If we want to see the public and private key, just go to the path and run the command slash home slash username slash dot ssh, and we can see the public and private keys here. This is the private key that we have created. If we want to see the public key, copy this one and paste it here. And this is the public key. In this way, we can see the private and public keys. In order to correct this instance using PuTTY, we need the private key. Now we will see how to log into this instance using PuTTY. For that, First, we have to create public and private keys.
we have to use the application PuttyGen. And here we have to click on Generate. By using this tool, we can create public and private keys. In the Key Comment field, specify the Google Cloud username. Here, the username is AWS Test 15. And then we have to specify the key passphrase. After that, click on Save Private Key. And then click Save. After that, copy the public key and go to Metadata. Here, click on SSH Keys and click Edit and Add Item. And we have to add the public key here. After that, click on Save. Now, open PuTTY. Here, we have to select the SSH authentication and set the private key path. After that, go to the session and give the instance IP address. The instance IP address is 104-199-20871. Go back to PuTTY and paste it here. And click on Open. Enter the username and the passphrase. And we have successfully logged in to the instance that has been launched in the Google Cloud. And from here, we can run any command. In this way, we can connect an instance of the Google Cloud using the PuTTY tool. In this lesson, we have discussed compute projects. Thank you.